Okay, so in this example, we are going to be looking at the northwest corner method to set up the initial um, table for this transportation problem. So a reminder about the northwest corner method is you obviously start in the northwest corner, so you're going to start in this corner over here, and you're going to investigate the supply and demand. So the required here is actually the demand, it's just you know a different kind of word for it. And then the capacity is going to be your supply. Okay, so let's continue. So what we're going to do here is we're looking at the northwest corner and we look at your demand and your supply and we choose the one that is lowest and we put it in to here. Remember what that basically is saying is that if you have to look at this, it is the variable that is from X to A is going to be 100. So your decision variable for that one is going to be 100 in this case. And then we basically subtract that 100 from both them and that is to maintain the constraint so that would now be equal to 200 and again that's maintaining the constraint and then you go ahead and you look at the other one and you subtract one of them is going to be equal to zero okay so that's where it's coming from and just a reminder that obviously in this question we had already checked that the supply and demand were equal to each other if they weren't you have to go and make some changes to your table bringing out um, dummy variables or dummy rows and or columns. Okay, so we have done that 200 and that one is zero. So now we've already met this constraint here. And remember this constraint here is basically saying something like, let's just refer to all our variables as a lowercase x. That's x11, that's x12, that's x13, and you know, the capacity there is 100. And remember we have x21, x to 2x to 3 and the capacity there is 300 and then we have the x31 x32 x33 and the capacity there is 300 and when we look at that you know that's a constraint and you know they only have up to 100 to supply so it'll be always be less than or equal to kind of a situation there and then we still have our columns also you know um, keeping everything up to date there so we have for our columns, we have, you know, the x11 plus the x21 plus the x31. We're looking at that first column, and that is the demand. It has to have 300, so it is greater than or equal to, you know, 300 kind of situation. Those must produce at least 300 of them. And the same for all, you know, the rest of the columns. So you'll have x12 plus x22 plus x three, two, and I'm actually being very lazy about this because I can actually just read it from there because it's the column and it must be greater than or equal to 200 because that's the demand, that's how much they need to maintain or get. And then we have the last one is this. So just a reminder to please remember what it's actually telling you so that you remember why you're doing this in the first place. So this first constraint has been met with this being 100 because it has to be less than or equal to 100 is now equal to 100 so those you know can't have anything in them which is why when we're doing this northwest corner method we then basically say we neglect or we scratch out that row because it's equal to zero there and we move on to the next next northwest corner so the next northwest corner is this one over here so we'll be looking at the um, demand for it which we have as 200 right now because again remember we really have that 100 chilling there in that constraint so we only have 200 left to play for the x21 and the x31. So we have that 200 and then we have the 300. Again, we choose the lower one and that is again to meet the constraints. So we choose the 200 and we subtract obviously the 200 from both those to see what we have left to play with. And now we have that equal to 100. So then we move on kind of a situation. So we move on. The first thing we do is just to make sure which of these constraints are being met. And in this case, it is, you know, your constraint over here where you have, this is now 200. So technically this one is being met. So let's just put text there so you can see what's going on. And that's why we kind of like scratch out and, you know, scratch out that column and continue to the next northwest corner. So here's the next northwest corner. And we follow the same approach. So we have the 200 and the 100. We choose the lowest one, which is the 100, and we put it in over there and then subtract it from both. So 
if you subtract it from both, this one's going to be equal to zero. And if you go ahead and actually look, remember this is x22, you can put it in there so you can see what's going on. And what you can see what's going on with this, don't forget x21 is 200. You can see that this constraint is being met because that's equal to zero, but you can also see by checking it with your constraints. So that one's done. So we kind of scratched that out because we can't put anything in there. And we go to the next northwest corner. And then we look in here. And now we have 100 and 300. So we have 100 chilling over there. And then again, we can, you know, put it in wherever we see it to see what is going on. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. My bad. Three, two. There we go. And what we're going to do here is obviously we now see that it's meeting that constraint. And you can see it's meeting that constraint. 100 and 100 gives you that 200. So you go to the next northwest corner method. Oh, don't forget, you would have had to subtract by 100 here to get 200. And you have, you'll have you see, and that's the reason why this works is because your demand and your supply are the same. You're going to be left with 200 and 200, which means that's going to be 200. And that's it for the northwest corner method. So just a reminder, northwest corner method, you start in the northwest corner, you look at your supply and your demand, you choose whichever one is smallest, and you shove it into you know where your decision variable is. So you set your decision variable to the smaller value of the supply and demand. Then you're going to subtract that from your supply and your demand, and that is just to make sure that you are going to maintain your constraints. Because remember, this table is structured to actually show all the constraints. So then you you know you subtract it so that you can maintain those constraints, and then you move on to well, you scratch out whichever row or column has the constraint been met. In other words, if you had to total up this, it'll you know equal 300. If you had to total up that, it'll equal you know the 100. And you scratch out the one that is no longer you know applicable because you've already sorted everything out, and you move to the next northwest corner, and you follow that approach all the way through. A reminder again that we can do this because this is 700 and this is 700. So this is something you should check before the time. If it is not equal, the supply and demand is not equal to each other, then you have to make some changes to your table before you go ahead and do the northwest corner method. Okay, one of the other things that you can do now is you can actually check that it is prepped for the Modi method or whichever method um, to solve the optimal solution by investigating how many non-empty cells there are. And remember, the whole idea with the non-empty cells is you take the n plus n, or the number of columns and the number of rows, and subtract one, and that's how many non-empty cells you need. So in this case, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1 gives you 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this one's already all set up and ready for, you know, the optimal uh, method that we look at in this course, which is Modi method.